Hey everyone, this video is on standard solutions. A standard solution refers to a solution in chemistry with an accurately measured concentration. And this concentration can be expressed in various units. Most commonly, this will be in molarity, which will be moles per liter. There are two types of standard solutions, a primary standard and a secondary standard. This video will primarily focus on the primary standard solution. Not every chemical can be made into a primary standard solution. And there are numerous properties that makes a chemical suitable to be made as a primary standard. First of all, the chemical or sample of the chemical must be of high purity and have an accurately known chemical composition. In simpler words, the sample ideally shouldn't have any impurities which will interfere with its measurements and will affect the accuracy of the calculated concentration. For example, if we want to measure 2 grams of a particular chemical and dissolve this in water to make a standard solution, we want to ensure that all of the 2 grams is pure and contains only the chemical that we desire that we want to make into a chemical solution. The more impurity that is contained in the 2 gram sample, the more inaccurate the final concentration will be for the standard solution. And because, by definition, a standard solution should have an accurately measured concentration, only chemicals with high purity and an accurately known composition should be made into a primary standard. The primary standard should be chemically stable when it's made into a solution. It should be readily soluble in a solvent of choice. Most commonly, we use distilled or deionized water as a solvent, so we want to make sure that the chemical that we chose is completely soluble in water. Ideally, the chemical should also have a high molar weight or molecular weight because the number of moles of a chemical is given by the mass divided by its molar mass. When a chemical has a relatively large molar mass, any changes in its mass, which is a numerator, will correspond to a smaller change in the number of moles. Inevitably, when we are measuring the mass of the chemical before dissolving in a solvent, we are going to have small deviations in its mass, which is limited by the precision and the accuracy of the balance scale that we'll be using. So by using a chemical with a relatively high molar mass, we can reduce the impact of this mass deviation on the number of moles of the primary standard that will be dissolving in the solvent. And finally, primary standard solutions sometimes are used in experiments that involve chemical reactions. In these cases, the chemical itself should be able to quickly and completely react in the desired chemical reaction. This concept will be discussed further in detail in Year 12 HSC Chemistry. In this video, we won't be speaking too much about secondary standard as this will be discussed in a separate video, but secondary standards are used when primary standards are impractical for certain reasons. An example of secondary standard is sodium hydroxide solution, because sodium hydroxide is not suitable to be used as a primary standard as it absorbs moisture from surrounding air. So this leads to impurities being integrated into a sample of sodium hydroxide. And this means in a sample of sodium hydroxide, we can never know the exact chemical composition. As a result of this inconvenient property, in order to determine the actual concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution, we need to determine this by calibrating this against another primary standard solution. For example, this can be done in titration, which will be discussed in year 12 chemistry. So the concentration of a secondary standard, unlike a primary standard, is not precisely known from its preparation and initial calculations. It is always determined from calibration against a primary standard solution. Now, let's talk about the steps involved in making a primary standard solution. Ideally, the primary standard should be available in a solid state, which allows convenient and accurate measurements before dissolving in the desired solvent. So step one is always to perform the relevant calculations so we know exactly how many grams or milligrams of the chemical we want to dissolve in the solvent later on. So we'll measure this in a beaker and then followed by stirring to encourage full dissolution and we will then add the dissolved solution from the beaker into a volumetric flask. And in this volumetric flask, we'll be topping up with the solvent up until the indicator mark in the flask, followed by adding the stopper and inverting to homogenize the solution. We'll talk about each step in detail now. In the making of a standard solution, we always use a glassware called volumetric flask. 
and volumetric flasks are used to measure the accurate volume of liquids. Instead of using measuring cylinders and beakers to measure volume of the solutions, volumetric flasks will always offer more accurate volumes and as a result more accurate concentrations because concentration is dependent on not just the moles of the standard we're adding but also the volume of solvent we are adding into the flask. So to reiterate, when you're making a standard solution, you should never use a beaker or measuring cylinder to measure the volume of the solvent as these will lead to more inaccurate concentrations compared to when you're using a volumetric flask. Volumetric flasks come in various sizes. More commonly, in school laboratories, you will find them in 50 milliliters, 100 milliliters, 250, 500, and 1000 milliliters. Which volumetric flask you're using depends on the volume of the solution you want to make. Let's use an example to go through each of the steps of making a primary standard solution. Let's say we want to prepare a 250 milliliters solution that has a concentration of 0.0500 moles per liter of sodium hydrogen carbonate, which has the formula of NaHCO3. The first step is to weigh out the sodium hydrogen carbonate that, that is available in a solid form. We know the volume and the concentration of the solution, so by multiplying the two together, we'll be able to calculate the number of moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate that we want to first prepare. 0 0.0500 times by 0.25 liters, and this gives a number of moles of 0 0.0125. Now, keep in mind, on the balancing scale, we will not be able to measure the number of moles. So we need to convert the moles into the corresponding mass by multiplying the moles by the molar mass of the compound, which is sodium hydrogen carbonate. So 0.0125 multiplied by the molar mass of sodium, which is 22.99, plus the molar mass of hydrogen, 1.008, plus the molar mass of carbon, and then plus the molar mass of three oxygen atoms. And here we have a mass of 1.05 grams. Now the number of significant figures or decimal places for the mass ultimately depends on how precise your balance scale is. So here, the diagram shows the mass of 1.325 grams, which is actually a lot more precise compared to the two decimal places mass we calculated. If your balance scale allows for three decimal places, we will actually want 1.050 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate. In this instance, we've weighed out way too much sodium hydrogen carbonate. So what you will do is to use a metal or plastic spatula to remove some quantity of sodium hydrogen carbonate until the mass on the scale matches what you've calculated, which is 1.050 grams. Once we've measured the correct quantity of the primary standard, we'll then add distilled water slowly into the beaker to avoid any splashes. We want to avoid splashes because this will potentially lead to loss of the sodium hydrogen carbonate that we carefully measured out. In the making of a standard solution that is using water as a solvent, you want to always use distilled or deionized water because in here, all of the common mineral ions are removed, such as sodium, magnesium, and calcium. These ions can sometimes interfere with the chemical that you're dissolving in the solvent, which will affect the final concentration. So do not use tap water to dissolve the solutes. In some instances, you can use a glass stirring rod to help you dissolve the solids completely in the water. For more soluble primary standards, like sodium hydrogen carbonate, you can simply use the swelling motion of the beaker itself to help dissolve the solids. After dissolving the standard in the beaker, we'll then transfer this into a volumetric flask. Remember, you should always use a volumetric flask to measure the volume of the solution when you're making a primary standard. We only use the beaker in the beginning to help us initially dissolve the primary standard. We are not using the beaker to measure the final volume of the solution. Now, in this example, we wanted to make 250 milliliters of sodium hydrogen carbonate solution. So we want to use a volumetric flask that has the same volume, which is 250 milliliters. Before we use volumetric flask, make sure it's thoroughly cleaned with distilled water. We don't want any other unwanted chemical inside the flask when we're adding the sodium hydrogen carbonate. We always use distilled or Diana's water to rinse the flask because we'll eventually add distilled water to the flask to make the solution in the very next step.
Due to the narrow opening and the neck of the flask, we always use a plastic or glass funnel to help the transfer from the beaker into the volumetric flask. After the transfer is completed, you should always use distilled water to rinse the funnel and the beaker involved in the transfer. This is to ensure that all of the sodium hydrogen carbonate is completely transferred from the beaker into the flask without any left behind. This is what we call quantitative transfer. And of course, after rinsing, we, you want to discard the washings into the flask rather than the sink. After quantitative transfer, you will then continue to add distilled or deionized water until the water level is approximately one centimeter below the indicator mark on the flask. The indicator mark on the volumetric flask indicates the corresponding volume that is labeled on the flask. So for this particular flask, this engraving here will mark 250 milliliters. When the water level approaches the engraving, we want to start adding the distilled water dropwise by using a plastic dropper. We keep adding until the bottom of the meniscus reaches the engraving. This is the point where you stop adding the solvent and we will stop up the volumetric flask. So again, we want to keep adding the solvent until the bottom of the meniscus is aligned with the engraving. And you will check for this by looking at the engraving at the same eye level. So do not look from above or below the indicated line to avoid any parallax error. The last step is to add the stopper to the volumetric flask and invert the flask up to 10 times in order to homogenize the solution. Once you've done this, make sure you label the flask with the preparation date of the actual primary standard, the substance that was added to the solvent, so in this case it will be sodium hydrogen carbonate, and the concentration, which is 0.0500 mol per liter. Okay, let's go through some examples on how to calculate the required mass of the primary standard that we are adding to the water for making a solution. We want to prepare a 250 milliliter sodium chloride standard solution that has a concentration of 0.1 mol per liter. So, of course, if this is the volume that we desire, we'll be using a 250 milliliter volumetric flask. Let's first start by calculating the number of moles by times in the concentration and the volume we desire. 0.1 mol per liter multiplied by 0.2 liters, which will be 0.025 moles of sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is an ionic compound that will be available in solid state. So we can find the relevant mass we want to measure on the balance by times in the moles by the molar mass of sodium chloride, which would be 22.99 plus the molar mass of chlorine, which is 35.45. And this gives me a mass of 1.461 grams. Once we measure this exact quantity of sodium chloride, we'll be adding this to a beaker of water for dissolution, then transferring this quantitatively to a 250 milliliter volumetric flask for making the primary standard solution. Sometimes you'll be asked to dilute a already made stock solution to prepare a more diluted version of the same solution in a volumetric flask. So we want to dilute a 2 mol per liter hydrochloric acid solution to prepare 100 milliliters of hydrochloric acid that has a 0.5 mol per liter concentration. So we want to prepare 100 milliliters. So what volume of volumetric flask do you want to use? The correct answer will be 100 milliliters. Again, we want to find out how many moles of the solution we actually want. So 0.5 mol per liter is the concentration times by the volume that we desire, which is 0.05 moles of HCl. In contrast to the previous example, the HCl in this instance is available in a solution form. We have already purchased a stock solution that has a concentration of 2.0 mol per liter. So instead of converting this moles into mass, we, I want to convert this into the correct volume that I want to transfer from the 2 mole per liter stock solution. We know that moles equals the concentration times by the volume, so the volume is equal to the moles divided by the concentration. The moles I want to transfer is 0.05 moles, divided by the concentration of the stock solution is 2.0. So this is equivalent to 0.025 liters, which is 25 milliliters. So from the 2 mol per liter hydrochloric acid stock solution, I want to transfer 25 milliliters into an 100 ml volumetric flask, as I previously mentioned. And then I want to add enough water, that is distilled or deionized water, until it reaches the indicated mark of the flask, and that is 100 milliliters. If I already have 25 milliliters, I want to add 75 milliliters of distilled water until I reach the indicated mark of the flask. And then this is followed by inversion to homogenize the solution 
And of course, finally, do not forget to label the flask with the preparation date, the substance used to make the solution, as well as its concentration, which will be 0.5 mol per liter. This concludes the video on primary standard solutions. Hey everyone, if you found this video helpful, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Want even more? Become a Patreon member for early access to videos, exclusive Discord discussions about questions on chemistry and physics, and live preparation sessions for your exams. Don't forget to head over to our website for topic tests and practice exams to further improve your understanding and learning.